Hi everyone. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the show The Repair Shop, but over the last few years on the BBC, it's really grown in popularity. Uh, we watch it occasionally. So people come and bring all manner of junk, really, to the repair shop. It might be an old broken doll or a, a worn picture frame or something like that. Something that in and of itself has very little value because it's so decrepit now. But for the person bringing it, there's always a story behind it, always something that makes it really meaningful to them, that they want it to be restored as good as new by the repair shop. And there's a similar theme in the Bible story. Uh, Genesis 2 tells us that God uh, made Adam out of the dust of the earth, but then he breathed his breath of life into him. Humanity's value was not in their physical matter, but in their life that God gave, a life tying them to him and uniting them to him, the very source of their existence, who had his very breath within them. But our reading today in Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 to 19, tells us what happened after Adam and Eve chose to sin. Rather than choosing God, they made themselves the change agents of their lives the control agents, as it were. One of the consequences of their sin, uh, we read, was that they would return to the ground since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Sin denies that life of God within us, that breath, which makes us his, which makes us eternal. And if we deny him, we are just dust part of a temporary decaying world uh, and destined to die. But like the people at the repair shop, Jesus's life, death and resurrection was kind of like a master craftsman sitting down to restore his broken creation. Now, to the outsider, we would look just like junk, disintegrating into dust. Why would he look to restore something so broken, such a devalued people? And the answer is simple, because we are his, because he loves us. And when we trust Jesus, he puts his life back into us by his Holy Spirit. From dead, worthless vessels of dust, we become his creation again. This is his work. He puts the hope of eternity, rekindles it back within us. As Paul puts it in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. This is Jesus' work, it's his gift to restore us. Our bodies now are still of dust, still without value in and of themselves, but now we hold within us that breath of God again. The promise that we are restored and will be restored fully in eternity in his presence at the resurrection from the dead. Paul continues a few verses later, therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. So perhaps that just leaves us with the question, are we living according to that new life God has put within us? Do we know that inner renewing of our inner selves, of being united with him? Or does that phrase, wasting away, more describe our earthly experience? Are we living according to the temporary and the decaying nature of this world and, and feel that dissatisfaction of never quite having what we're reaching for? We have been redeemed by Christ to be so much more than what we can see. We are more than dust. We are more than whatever this world says. We are his eternal possession, joined by his breath in us again. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you that your story is one of restoration. Though we did not deserve 
you, a master craftsman, to come and heal us from our brokenness that we caused ourselves. You've done it nevertheless because you love us so much. We praise you and we thank you. We ask, Lord, may we know your work in our hearts today. Amen.